everyone, welcome back to the Emotional Man Podcast. I am really excited to have a very dynamic duo with us. This is Jason and Scott Henderson. They are a phenomenal family of entrepreneurs, and we're really excited to get both their perspectives on what it's like growing up in an entrepreneurial family, and how do you go about managing the stress and potential conflict that brings. So welcome, Jason and Scott. Hey, thanks. Happy to be here. Why don't we go ahead and start off talking about your businesses and your entrepreneurial endeavors? How's that you began working together? Why don't we go there and maybe Jason, if you can start talking and then we can uh, get Scott's perspective. Okay. Let me back up a little bit. I grew up in an entrepreneurial world, if you will. Uh, my dad had been in business for himself since he, uh, he fought in World War II. When he came home, they went into business. He and four brothers that had been in the war together. At the same time, different parts of the world, they went into business and he had been in businesses for himself this whole life. So I grew up in that, right? Although he encouraged me to go to school to get a good job, which I did. And I went that way and was not, I don't know, was never really super happy. I was very creative and wanted to do my own thing, right? And then I launched into that, doing my own thing. And I think that Scott grew up in that arena. And we've done a lot in real estate. My dad did a lot in real estate, both in developing and managing and owning and buying and selling type of thing. And that's where we were. And Scott wanted in the worst way to get into real estate and kind of be going in that direction, being his, you know, being in business for himself and basically said to him, you don't know what a good deal is. Go walk 50 properties here. Here's a spreadsheet to help you analyze it. Go walk 50 different deals to so you know what's good and what's not. I mean, we're not even going to make an offer until you've done that. Um, so he went one direction. I'm in a little bit different direction, but we have a lot of overlap. And so it's been a little bit later that we started to do things together. I know, Scott, what do you say? Yeah, I would say so. I It's just been normal. I grew up in the space. I watched both my grandfather and my father do it. The first job that I really ever had besides just managing the properties was doing door to door sales. So I've never had a like consistent income <laughs> per se. Like Jason said, he actually told me to do a hundred different projects and I did. It took me about a month and a half to go through and analyze about a hundred different deals. I went out and walked probably 20 of them. And still today, that's one of my favorite things to do is to jump in the car with my father and my little brothers and drive up to Pocatello and look at some other project that we're planning on acquiring. But as I graduated college, I got introduced to a mentor of mine who's still a mentor today. And he basically, after five minutes of talking to me, said, come run my loan company. Okay. So that was my introduction into the loan world. And I was instantly put into a company that was funding 50, 100 million easy a year and just managing all of that. And then from there, it grew really rapidly where I figured out how to do hard money myself and started acquiring more. And now we do stuff all over the country. I still do a little bit with that brokerage, but I'll forever be grateful for some of those individuals who have guided me on the way. Now, talk to me about your spouses. Now, you, both of you, and obviously, Jason, you grew up, you said your father was entrepreneurial, you were entrepreneurial, Scott's entrepreneurial. Has that ever created any conflict or stress with the individuals you married? Oh, yeah, certainly. For me and my wife, she comes from a very traditional background. Even though her father's in sales and such, like she never had to worry about finances or where stuff was coming from. It was always very consistent. And for the first couple of years, the whole emphasis was, okay, I see where you are. Now we got to go through this whole educational process so that you can understand where we're going and why we're having these conflicts. And once we were able to do that, a lot of things have become easier over time. Yeah, I, like I said earlier, I, I went to education. I have a PhD in chemistry and I had a pretty good paying job in the biotech bay in San Francisco Bay Area. I was not overly happy there. I only lived 10 miles from the lab, but on most days it took me an hour and a half to get there and the same to get back. If traffic was that bad, I 
was not a very happy camper. And so when I was able to leave there, come here to Utah, uh, started to get into some other things. So early on in our marriage, there wasn't a concern like you're thinking that a spouse might have. Now, I was blessed. Like you said, my, my dad had been in that space and my father-in-law was in sales and he didn't have an underlying base salary. He was 100% commission, right? So Tanya had grown up in that arena where things were good and things were not so good. Sales were good or the economy was this or that, or business went under and she moved. So she was acclimated to that and has been very supportive and helpful along the way, which I've been very grateful for. So there's two issues here that I want to spend the remaining of our time together on. First, Scott, you talked about your spouse what for, comes from a, a traditional background. He said there had to be some education concerning what a you lot. Were and it's not only a spouse. You need to, in, and maybe Scott's being a little uh, cryptic here. His, his in-laws were very nervous, right? That their little girl was going to be taken care of. Are you getting a job? What are you going to do? How are you going to do this? And Scott had this, this vision in his head, and maybe I'm putting words in his mouth, but he had this vision in his head where he was going, what he wanted to do. And it wasn't congruent with what they felt like he needed to be doing so they took care of his little girl, their little girl, right? They they only have one daughter, so it's like protection. And that's been, I know that's been a real big struggle for Scott. But anyway, Scott, I'm sorry, I'm saying so. Oh, no, it's true. I, you, you talked only about the wife. I would say that more than just that, friends and in-laws in particular have needed even more education than she has. Because I, I have the advantage of trust with her. But although when it comes to my in-laws and stuff, they don't understand. I have spent the, my whole marriage sending them books and having them read and helping them understand. And even to this day, like we went from barely being able to make rent and stuff. I lived in my in-laws basement for a while to all of a sudden making, let's just say a good amount of money <laughs> where, where they can't understand where I can do that, but I can't get a loan. But there, there's like these little nuances that they just don't get. And so it's from their perspective, they're like, okay, was he telling the truth? Is he lying? Is he doing something shady? And so that's where a lot of the conflict is had is it's simply a matter of not understanding the game. Does that answer your question? Yeah. So how do you navigate the conflict? Because sometimes it's so easy to wish you could just control and change someone, but you can't. And so... How did you go about handling the stress and the conflict? How did it manifest in the relationship? And then there's always, there can be conflict between in-laws. And by in-laws, I mean between the, the parents of both sides. So maybe Scott can talk about handling the stress of having in-laws who don't get what's going on. You think you should be doing something else. And then Jason, if you can talk from your perspective, what, what it's like as a parent oh, seeing that situation so again my first thing was like they just they don't understand so it's been i spend most of my time reminding myself that they just need to understand they just need to be educated they need to really have these conversations that to a typical american family there no one talks about money no one talks about some of these stuff and so it's been this very awkward dance <laughs> that I've had to have with my in-laws. And so there's times when I've had to put things on a break and be like, you know what, just in the effort to save this relationship, know that we disagree, know that I'm right, but I'm just going to take a break and we'll come back to it. And then there's other times where even though I think I'm right, I'm like, you know what, this is not the battle I want to die on. This is They're not ready for this. And so more than anything, it's taken a lot of thought and I haven't done a good job in some cases there there's been arguments between my wife and I although again like over time it's my wife and I have started to become more and more on the same page and as we've been able to do that as I've been able to especially her educate her more and how she has started to understand and now we're five years into marriage and now she's really starting to see some of the fruits come from this it's been easier because she becomes this conduit between her and her parents. 
I don't like putting her in that spot as often as possible, but when it's necessary, a lot of times it's easier for them to listen to her than it is for them to listen to me. And so it's, I'm still struggling to work it out and figure it out. And, but the little things I can help with, or I'll pitch in on that. I do so. And then what has saved us a lot is I have stopped talking about our successes as much. I've become much more tight lipped around some people. <laughs> I I used to be extremely open. And even to my own father has told me that I need to settle down a little bit and not disclose so much. So that is, that's helped quite a bit as well. Thank you, Scott. What has this been like for you as a father, Jason? There's but sometimes it's been funny. Sometimes it's been frustrating watching someone go through some frustrations, knowing that it's good for them, learning to handle things. There have been multiple times where I felt like picking up the phone and calling certain individuals and saying, back off, being the papa bear, right? And, and jumping in and fighting that battle to some degree. I haven't done that. I don't know. It's just like Scott says, it's a different way of thinking. And some people maybe are not ready for that or don't quite understand it. So you need to be patient and hopefully they'll come around to your way of thinking. Perhaps one of the last questions we can discuss is how do you teach the entrepreneurial mindset in a family? Is it done intentionally or do you think you just was picked up just by being in the environment and watching? When I got through with my postdoc at Caltech, and then I took my first real job, if you will, after schooling, moved up to the Bay Area and had the third child was on the way. And I realized I had this high paying job and I had this Dr. Henderson legitimate title and everything. And people referred to me as that and asked me advice. Yet the reality was, is I still was almost living paycheck to paycheck. All right. It's just that my expenses were a lot higher. And of course, San Francisco was a very expensive place to be. And, and I, I felt American dreams dead. I'm never going to do as good as my dad. I'm not going to be able to do for my kids what dad did for me, yada, yada, yada. And there was this question in the back of my head that a professor would often asked me is, well, if you're so smart, why aren't you rich? It, it was me delving into books and then finding techniques and processes of how to really generate wealth and realize that it's not the W-2 route. It's not the nine to five job. And so when I, when I read the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, what I recognize is that my father was both. My, my biological father was both. In, in practice, he was rich dad. In advice, he was poor dad. And not that he was attempting to hold me back. That's what he felt like was the right thing. Go to college, get a good job, and it'll be okay. And so when I started recognize that, I said, okay, I'm going to start doing what dad's doing or dad has done. And that was, you know, as Scott was, let me see, three, four. And then it, I was intentional about having those discussions around the family all the time. Would to take the boys. We had we bought some real estate when we first came to Logan. We bought a small office building, which I'm in right now. We bought a fourplex, and my maintenance crew were my boys. Every Saturday morning, we'd get up, we'd put the lawnmower in the truck or in the trailer, and we would go from place to place. And one would do the trimming, one would do the mowing, one would do the sweeping, and I employed them. And I was teaching them, this is broken, and so. This is, we'd repair it together or would do whatever. But then I recognize, say, look, we didn't come, we haven't been by this property since last Saturday, yet people are giving us rent every single day. And that rent translates into the, that new bat or those new cleats or the new basketball or whatever it is that we felt like we needed at the time. And so they started realizing that was in a, a form of mailbox money or passive income. So I don't know that I intentionally did it other than that's how we did it, right? We simply did it. And so to this day, Scott's younger brother can re repair most anything around the house. He was probably the most attentive of the three. The third one, he can repair all kinds of stuff. Scott is, I don't know what happened to him. He, he can't repair a broken light fixture. I don't know. I'm he a just, good delegator. He's focused on other things, right? But it, that was the whole mentality is they like the, the ability that, you know, my dad's the coach. My dad's at practice. My dad's here. My dad's there. Well, my dad's at, at still at work. My dad's still at work. I can't, my dad can't because he's at work. And I think they enjoyed having me around a lot. 
And as they grew up, they wanted to have that for themselves and wanted to be able to say, wow, we just had something good happen. We're going to celebrate. We're taking the rest of the day off. You're not able to do that when someone else is telling you when to show up for work and when you can leave. So I hope that answers your question. That's simply been the practice. And what it was is I started to emulate more of what I saw my dad do. And did my dad do it intentionally? I don't think so. Like I said, he came home from war. He had a wife and a three-year-old by the time he got back and he needed to find work. And so he started doing stuff for him, for himself. He creating a business, right? And that's how we did it too. I could add some color as well to this. He was always there. Jason never missed a ball game. He might've missed like the first part when I hit my first home run in high school, but he, he was two minutes late. That was more traffic. He was always there. It and- was your mother. <laughs> And I got, I had the beautiful opportunity to be recruited by several D1 schools. And the only reason was because I could call dad at noon and be like, dad, it's time for ball practice. And we would go practice for hours and then he could go back. And so that was, that was a huge advantage. And that's something that I plan on doing for my kids. Past that is anytime we were playing a game, like Jason talked about how we'd go mow and do different things at the apartments and stuff. And then he would talk about it when we'd play cash flow or we'd play monopoly. He would make sure to take a moment to point out, Hey, this is what's going on here. Hey, look at this and draw the connections for us. And it wasn't until much later until those connections really started to become real. I was like, okay, now how exactly do I do that? But it was that foundation of the constant hints. Uh, uh, The podcast that I often listen to talks a lot about success. There's no roadmap to success. It only leaves clues. And so you got to pay attention. Mm. And I would say that Jason did very well at that. I love that. I love that. I just want to say thank you to the Jason and Scott for sharing some time with us today, sharing how, how to create an entrepreneurial mindset in the family and also just navigating kind of some of the natural conflict that comes when you merge two different cultures, right? <laughs> so thank you so much for Scott and Jason for coming on and, and sharing your life's experience with us. Thank you. Thank you.